，是西汉第四位皇帝景帝刘启的陵园，位于西安市北郊的渭河之畔，占地面积二十平方公里，由帝陵陵园、后陵陵园、南北区外葬坑、礼制建筑、陪葬墓园。行图墓地以及杨陵驿等部分组成。陵园内数以万计的出土文物，真实再现了汉代的宫廷文化和社会生活。走进汉阳陵地下博物馆的一瞬间，你会为它异乎寻常的保护和展示方式而感到惊奇。为了展现文物遗址出土前的原始环境。场馆采用玻璃墙全封闭的展现形式，将遗址区与外界环境隔绝分离，从而达到有效保护和游览观赏的双重效果。当你穿行在玻璃通道上，俯视脚下一条条外葬坑内丰富的出土文物时，犹如穿梭在古今交错的时光中。尘封千年的历史气息扑面而来。帝陵十五号外葬坑内发现的茶叶遗迹，是目前为止发现的世界上最早的茶叶实物，距今约两千一百年。它的发现将中国古代种植、利用茶叶的历史向前推进了约三百年。汉阳陵出土的武士俑。侍女俑面带微笑，神情怡然，穿越两千余年的时光，令你怦然心动。他们祥和自如的神态，不正是文景之治、国泰民安景象的真实反应吗？南阙门是帝陵陵城四门中的南门，这是一座复原式遗址保护建筑。其恢宏的气势，既再现了古代皇帝专用三出阙高台建筑雄伟高大的原貌，又完整的将原南阙门遗址的全貌展示其中。宗庙遗址形制规整，规模宏大，是目前发现保存最完整的帝陵陵庙建筑遗址。在保护和展示这一遗址时，采用局部复原上移的方式，既使游客真正领略当年宗庙建筑的规模宏大和气势恢宏，又使这一珍贵遗址得到了较好的保护。踏上汉阳陵这片恬静而秀美的土地，即可领略西风残照、汉家陵阙的浩渺与沧桑，又能观赏遗址公园如。
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Hanyang Ling Museum. Hanyang Ling Museum is a site museum built on the burial place of Emperor Jingdi and his empress. Emperor Jingdi was the fourth emperor of the Western Han Dynasty. He ruled from 157 BC to 141 BC. He began to build his tombs during the fourth year of his reign, and the whole construction lasted a total span of 28 years. The mausoleum is a huge complex, which is composed by the emperor and empress graveyard. Uh, the southern and northern burial pits symbolize the south and north army, the satellite tombs of high officials, and the youngling town. Now I will lead you around the mausoleum. We are now on the Xianyang Terrace, which is located to the northwest of the ancient capital Chang'an City. This place, also called the Oriental、uh, Valley of the Emperors, which is compared with the、uh, pyramids of pharaohs in the Egypt,、uh, both of them are the burial place of the national leaders. Uh, here, this place、uh, is very broad and wide, with rich soil.、Uh, it is good for the burial things, and it was adjacent to the ancient capital, which make it very convenient to build or the and、um, for the later、uh, ritual sacrifices. So they choose this place to、uh, bury the emperor. We know that the Western Han Dynasty is a very important period in ancient Chinese history.、Uh, it was ruled from 202 BC to 5 DC. It was ruled by 11 emperors, and today、uh, we were we will introduce the fourth emperor of this dynasty. Uh, he is the father of Emperor Wu Di, the opener of the Silk Road. And also the most important and famous emperor in the Western Han、uh, Dynasty. We know in ancient times the emperor's tomb was built by the、uh, criminal tent laborers. Hanyang Ling was also built by the criminal、uh, tent laborers. In 1972.、Uh, We excavated a huge area、uh, with many skeletons. The area is the criminal tent laborers' graveyards.、Uh, it covers an area of 800 square meters with lots of skeletons, no coffins, only such shackles attached to them. These shackles were used weird by、uh, ancient criminals. We, this one we called Tie Qian,、uh, An Qian, and this one we called An Ti.、Uh, they were wired、uh, during the rest when the criminal laborers were having having a rest to prevent them from decay from escaping.、Uh, we know Emperor Qin Shi Huang used、uh, more than seven hundred thousand criminals to build his tombs. Emperor Jing Di also used tens of thousands of criminals to build his tomb.、Uh, the building of the emperor's tomb is a very huge construction works of the nation at that time. Here we can see the earliest clock. It is called the pottery dripping pot. It was used to measure time. We know in very ancient times there is no clocks, so people use water dripping pot, or sand dripping pot, or sun dial to measure times. Here we can see a water dripping pot.、Uh, it was used to measure time like this. 
we put water in this pot. In the middle, there is a tube with uh, measures with measurement or divided uh, tubes inside it. Uh, we can then the water began to dripping. We can know the changing of the time from the divine measures on the tube. So it is the earliest dripping pot, or we call the earliest uh, measurement for the time. Here we can see the emperor's underground army. They were made to safeguard the underground world of the emperor. Just like, like the terracotta warriors of the Qing Shi Huang's museum. We can say in ancient times, uh, the emperor wanted to bring all the things he enjoyed in the daily life to the afterlife, to go on living in the afterlife. The emperor Qing Shi Huang wanted to bring his army to the afterlife. So does the emperor uh, uh, Jing Di. Here we can see his soldiers. The soldiers originally has armors, which was made of leather, which has decayed. And they, were, they also have weapons in their hands, all kinds of weapons. And there are infantrymen, cavalrymen, shooters, all kinds of armor warriors, also generals in his underground world. We know that you may wonder why the hand terracotta warriors are so small in size, while well, those in the terracotta uh, museums are very large, because we know that uh, Emperor Jing Di learned something from the overthrow of the Qin Dynasty. He was very thrift and he's very kind to his people. So he made his various things only one third of real size uh, to save money. And also, the uh, making procedures are different. Uh, the terracotta warriors was made by curling a strip of uh, mud, uh, layer upon layers, to make a huge pot, uh, terracotta warriors. But here's pottery figures were made by mold. Different parts were made by different, co uh, different molds, and then glued together, and then baked and then painted attached with some pigment like the air brown and the eyes are black and their body was flesh like the flesh color uh, uh, however the terracotta warriors color was painted on the raw lacquer they painted a raw uh, a layer of raw lacquer between the pigment and the uh, pottery so the very difficult things is to protect the Raw of lacquer from decay after dehydration, but here's figures pigment was attached was directly attached to the body, so fortunately their color was remained. Just now we saw warriors. Now we will see some weapons held by warriors. In this dynasty, the weapon, there is no powder. So this area is called the cold, uh, cold weaponry age. The weapons at that, at that time can be divided into three categories. Long shaft weapon like Hilbert, short shaft weapon like dagger, and long range weapon like these crossbones. This is the uh, uh, most advanced weapon at that time. It was used together with bow and arrowheads to discharge. Uh, it has the advantage of aiming and discharge for long distance. It can be uh, divided into three sides. The small uh, triggers can be discharged by hand. The med medium-sized one must be discharged by feet. And the heavy one must be discharged by leverage. It is the most advanced weapon at that time. This pottery lady is the most beautiful lady so far discovered in Haiyangling Mausoleum. You may wonder why she is different from the other pottery figures we just visited. This lady's clothes was made by mold uh, and made by earth molded clothes and painted with colors. 
At that time, this lady is low in rank compared with the pottery figure, with the new pottery figure we just visited. These pottery figures were buried for high officials. At that time, the dressed pottery figure was exclusively used by emperor, and these ones were used by high officials. Uh, but after 2,000 years, because her clothes remained, so we found it more beautiful. And it, uh, it, the lady has become the image of our museum. She has been to more than 20 countries to visit. We can say in ancient times, people wear such kind of clothes. It was a long robe with three layers. There is no button, so the, uh, the clothes were tied by ropes and belt, and it will go all the way to the ankle. Uh, this lady, was, his hand, uh, her hand was in a cup. He was just pay homage to his masters, so very vivid and very beautiful. And we can say at that time, uh, it is impolite to expose, uh, to expose teeth while smiling. So this lady was smiling without exposing his tea, her teeth. And at that time, there is no bench or chair, so people were just sitting like this. They were kneeling down and sit on their own heels with an upright upper body. It's a very formal sitting style at that time. The tea leaves. The sample was unearthed in 1998, but the examination result only came until 2016. The Nature magazine published an article uh, to show the result of this sample, the earliest tea leaves. And the Guinness World Record gave us a certificate which reads the oldest tea leaves so far discovered are more than 2,100 2, years old tea. We know in the Western Han Dynasty, people eat, eat tea, not drink tea. That is say, to say they made congen teas. They will first bake the tea into a cake and then smash it into powder and then cooked it together with onion, uh, ginger, and orange. And after that, they will uh, eat it, that just like the porridge. And it is the most important discovery in Haiyang Ling Mausoleum. Now we arrived at the Empress Mausoleum. As I just told you, this whole complex is composed by the Emperor and Empress graveyard. Barapis symbolize military life, satellite graveyards, and Yangling Town. This is the Empress graveyard, the most important part of this mausoleum. We can say the central mound belongs to the Emperor. There is an enclosed wall around the uh, mound with a gate tower on each side. Around the mound, but inside the wall, there are 81 barrel pits radiating from the central mound, just like the sun beams. They are the barrel pits with some barrel objects. In ancient times, people believed in afterlife, so they want to bring all the things they enjoyed in daily life to the afterlife. The ministry is the most important part, of course, this barrel piece symbolizes different organizations or ministries controlled by the emperor. Now we only unearthed 10 barrel piece in the eastern part. Uh, later we will visit this part. 
uh, the emperor was buried underneath this big mound. It looks like a pyramid, but with a flat top. The emperor was buried underneath, not inside the mound. The height of the mound are the same with the depth of the chamber. Uh, the emperor's mound was about uh, 32 meters in height. As we know, uh, the pyramids of Zaro uh, were uh, mummified. Uh, the, the body was mummified and put into painted coffin, layer upon layer. But in the Western Han Dynasty, people thought that every part of the body was the important part gifted from emperor. So they cannot let any part go out of body. They will use jade clothes to protect their body from decay. And then the body was put into coffin. A chamber made of uh, cypress woods uh, was uh, put into this part as the main chamber of the emperor's underground vault. Now we will go to the site museum to see some burial pits. Uh, one thing I need to tell you is that the Empress Chamber was not excavated because our technology was not advanced enough to protect the, it. So it was left for later generations to excavate. As I just told you, different pits have different functions. We know the function of each pit through the cells or official cells or mud cells unearthed from the pit. For example, we found the uh, de department in charge of textile, in charge of granary, in, in charge of jurisdiction, uh, just to name a few. Now we see the pit that used to, to custod the uh, content the uh, concubines or palace maid who made mistakes. We know uh, in ancient times we called it cold palace. That is means this place oh, the emperor will never visit. This is a place uh, to lock some uh, concubines or some palace maid uh, who made mistakes. And we can say this pottery figures is different from the other pottery figures because they have a special white pigment uh, painted around their body. We know in ancient uh, Han Dynasty, people thought that slim and white are more beautiful. So they made the concubines slim and white. Now we see the shortest barrel pits among 10 barrel pits so far discovered. As we can see, the real pit uh, has been excavated and refilled with earth, and we made a replica on the top of the real pit to showcase what the barrel pits originally looked like. 
as we can see, the barrel things was originally put in such wooden box, like an underground wooden tunnel, and covered with beam filled with earth. After 2,000 years, this building has, this structure has decayed. So most of the pitch were in the, uh, in the scene of a very total mess. As we can see, originally there are three chariots in this pit. The first two chariots has no carriage, was used to open, the, open or clear the road. The last one with carriage uh, was used by the host. From this pit, uh, we unearthed a seal that told us it is an official in charge of the royal family things. It was also taken by some uh, royal relatives. Uh, we see these pottery uh, horses and pottery figures are all copied. The real chariot and horses were made of wood, has decayed. They only left some coat of lacquer and the traces on the mud. So after excavation, excavation, we refilled the real pit and made a replica to show you its original look. Here we can see many cute animals. This pit symbolizes the underground meat resources of the emperor. Uh, there are about 2,000 poultry animals in this pit. As we can see, the poultry animals was inlaid in two layers with a wooden board in between. We can see uh, poultry pigs, poultry sheep, poultry dogs, poultry goats. And the dog has two cans, domestic dog and wild dog. And we also found piglets in this pit. Here we can see a very funny pig mummy. Uh, she is impregnant. Uh, emperor brings such old animals, small animals, to his underground world because he wants to have endless meat resources in his afterlife. But you may ask, why we didn't find cattle and horses in this pit? Because we know at that time, horses are very important in the world. So uh, there is no horses. They never eat horses. And the cattle was the main power for cultivate, for plow. So they don't eat cattle and horses. There is no this kinds of animal in these meat resources. And at that time, people was very tricky when they choose animals. The smaller or the younger, the better. They choose the pig within three months old choose dog within one year old. The younger, the better. Here comes to the end of our visit.